सोशलिज्म फ्रॉम सोशलिस्ट द वर्ड इज सोशलिज्म नाउ इन ऑर्डर टू अंडरस्टैंड द डायमेंशंस ऑफ इंडियन सोशलिज्म दैट इज व्हाट टाइप ऑफ सोशलिज्म वी हैव इन इंडिया फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ सोशलिज्म बिकॉज अंटर एनालिस विल नॉट अंडरस्टैंड द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ सोशलिज्म we will not be able to understand that what type of socialism we have in india and in order to understand the concept of socialism we need to understand the concept of capitalism because socialism came as a reaction to capitalism so one sentence you can write here to start with in order to understand in order to understand the dimensions of indian socialism the dimensions of indian socialism we need to understand we need to understand the concept of socialism we need to understand the concept of socialism and in order to understand and in order to understand the concept of socialism the concept of socialism we need to understand we need to understand the concept of capitalism because some of you will be appearing next year some of you will be appearing even in 2025 so when you will revise the lecture notes the thing should be crystal clear that in what context the teacher had discussed this concept of capitalism ne to kya hoga you will feel are the teacher was to discuss socialism and he was discussing capitalism so that is why i made you to write the certain things that is this lecture notes should be like a textbook for you when you revise it you will be able to understand that in this context we had written this aspect now you see there are two aspects i always tell to my students one there is basic knowledge that is required for everyone who is appearing in the civil services examination minimum knowledge that is required and then the knowledge that is required from the examination point of view two things are there so basically even as students we need to know certain things and one more thing i will add on here there is overlapping in our syllabus also for example in paper 1 of the gs mains syllabus you may have seen that the topics are ideologies liberalism marxism socialism so your world history teacher will be discussing those aspects with you and if we talk about the indian polity section obviously in politics ideologies are very important so in the, no doubt your teacher who will be discussing uh, world politics with you world history with you he will be discussing these aspects in detail but yes some basic idea i will be giving you in the class so that when the teacher will discuss these things with you in the world history class the things will be easier for you to understand now i said that in order to understand the concept of socialism we need to understand the concept of capitalism when we talk about capitalism
capitalism and socialism as we all know are two economic systems capitalism is the private ownership of the means of production and distribution now every economic system has its root in a political philosophy in an ideology if we talk about capitalism from where capitalism came from where the idea of capitalism came that we need to understand this concept of capitalism is based on the 17th century ideology of liberalism it is the oldest ideology of the world and when we talk about liberalism liberalism basically is combination of two words and basically it has been derived from the latin word liber liber means freedom suppose if our parents allow us for a night show or a late night party with the friends what we say that my parents are liberal my parents are liberal means those who give importance to our freedom we call them as liberals it is a liberal society means the society gives emphasis or importance to our freedom then so when we talk about this term liber it means freedom so from there the ideology came that is liberalism in the 17th century some of the english philosophers they developed this ideology of liberalism now whenever an ideologue a philosopher gives a philosophy he gives the logic that why this is important so the first question is why freedom why the emphasis should be on freedom the classical liberals in the ncrts you may have heard this word you may have read this word classical liberals classical liberals means the liberals who had advocated the idea of freedom that is the classical liberals means who had propounded this idea of liberalism in the 17th century so the classical liberals especially they were english philosophers they were of the view that man is a rational being and this right to liberty freedom has been given to an individual by the nature because he is born as a human being it is a natural right right to free right to be free right to liberty it is a natural right nature has given this right to us because we are rational beings so rationality is the basis of freedom done so why freedom because the classical liberals felt that man was a rational being 
and a freedom will be given to an individual, his personality will be developed. Why freedom has been given to you by your parents that go to Delhi, you attend classes there, why? Because they have faith in your rationality. They believe that my kids are rational being. That is why freedom is given to an individual. And the moment when the system comes to know that we are misusing the freedom, there is curtailment in the freedom of the individual. Why section 144 is imposed? Why curfew is imposed? Why shoot at sight orders are given? Because there is a question mark on our rationality. In paper number 4 also, there is a topic called philosophical basis of governance. Why such topics are there? So that when you will govern this system, then you will be guided by certain philosophical things. When you will be DM, questions will be asked that sir, why there is curtailment of the rights of the people? Why curfew has been imposed? Why section 144? You should say that rationality is the basis of freedom. And we felt that some people may misuse their freedom as we had seen the last night. When freedom was given, they had misused their freedom. That is why we had to impose curfew in the city. That is why you read paper number 4. It is not ethics, Yo, I know ethics. How? Means the, the philosophical ideas have to be implemented in governance. In this way, we need to understand the things. If you understand, no, I want to, I have learned liberalism. No, you will never be able to understand liberalism. Practically as an administrator. So this is the first thing. Why freedom? Because the liberals had got faith in the rationality of the individuals. We all are rational beings. Now the second question, where freedom? First is why freedom? Then the second question is where freedom? We are not free in the society. There are do's and don'ts. We need to follow. Otherwise there will be chaos and anarchy in the society. Every society has got its own norms that we need to follow. If we need to follow the customs, the conventions which are followed in the society. Then even in your home also you are not free. Do's and don'ts are always there. But where are you free? After the class, some of you feel to take a cup of tea or coffee. Some of you will feel hungry, you will feel to eat something. Then depending on your test, depending on your taste and depending on your pocket, you will decide what to do, what to eat and where to eat. Some of you will say, I will settle for a cup of coffee there. Some of you will say that I will take, I will take a cup of tea from there. Oh. I will take some snacks from there. You have got a choice. Where? In the market conditions. Similarly, suppose if you want to buy a car, your family decides to buy a car. So first of all, depending on your taste and your pocket, you decide that what type of car we need to have. It will depend on the need of the family also. If it is a small family or a large family, joint family, it completely depends on you. So first of all you decide that is what type of car we will be having. Then according to your pocket you will search that okay this brand will be a bit costly one. I will go for this brand. And then you will talk to the dealers 10,000 discount, no 20,000 discount, 15,000 discount and then you will settle. You are free to decide in the market conditions. Similarly for the buyer, for the seller also, what to sell, at what price to sell, how many staff he will keep, it completely depends on him. That is what the liberals say, that the freedom of an individual can be best exercised only under the market conditions. 
so people feel that liberalization is a new concept but it is not a new concept liberalization has its roots in the 17th century ideology of liberalism so from there the concept has come liberalization so it has its roots in the 17th century ideology so the classical liberals basically they talked about free market economy that the freedom of the individual can be best exercised only under the market condition now you see how philosophically we have we have discussed that is from where the concept of liberalization had come now this ideology basically was the dominant ideology in the 17th century and the political philosophers they started deciding on the role of the governor the role of the state that based on this ideology what should be the role of the state so the classical liberals they favored the concept of minimal state what is this concept of minimal state that state is the best which rules the least so the more you are uh, you are away from the state the more hap happier you are the more freedom free you are and basically when we talk about a minimal state it is a police state what is the function of a policeman maintenance of law and order regulatory function the state not to interfere in the economic affairs the state not to undertake developmental functions the state has only to perform regulatory functions only to perform regulatory functions that is maintenance of law and order some economists they also favored this idea and adam smith the father of economics was one of them and the concept of laissez faire state came what is a laissez faire state it is an individualist state so from here the concept of capitalism started health education other amenities are not to be provided by the state they are to be individually owned so the state not to interfere in the economic affairs it was a night watchman state what is a night watchman 
roles, what night watchman's role is to protect us when we are sleeping. That is defense, that is protection, law and order. Now, this ideology was the dominant ideology in the 17th century. After that came the industrial revolution. And during the industrial revolution, this whole idea of the minimal state based on liberalism was the dominant idea. And under the influence of this particular ideology that is liberalism, the states did not enact any economic policy. Labor laws were not made by the state and the state performed only one function that is maintenance of law and order. And it was during the industrial revolution that the world community saw the exploitative aspect of capitalism. Till here only good things were in the mind. Man is a rational being. He will not misuse the freedom. But during the industrial revolution, the negative aspect, the exploitative element of capitalism was visible. As the state did not interfere in the economic affairs, no economic policies were made by the states. Labor legislations were not enacted by the state. No fixed hours, no minimum wages. And the capitalists started exploiting the workers. How it was done? The workers were forced to work for more hours but were paid lesser wages. For example, suppose it is decided that a worker works for 8 hours and he will be getting rupees 1500 for that. It is an agreed amount, it is not an exploitation. But during the industrial revolution, the capitalists started making the workers work for more hours, but they were given the same wages. So here, suppose if a worker is putting two extra hours or four extra hours, he is contributing more, he is producing more but he is getting the same wages. He is not giving, he is not being given anything in the profit that the capitalist is getting here. So, here the capitalist started gaining because of the labor of the worker. The workers were forced to work for more hours but were paid lesser wages. And what started happening in the society? The gap between the have and the have nots started increasing. The workers they were here, they remained here only, but the capitalists started becoming more rich. So, economic inequality started taking place in the society, it became rampant. And it was not because of the labor of the capitalist but it was because of the labor or the exploitation of the worker. So, when economic inequality became rampant, at that point of time, there came a man with a beard, his name was Karl Marx. Karl Marx challenged the ideology of liberalism and he said, what type of ideology you are talking about? What type of freedom you are talking about? It is creating gap between the have and the have nots. And Karl Marx said, it was not freedom that was the need of the hour, but the need of the hour was equality and that to economic equality. So, capitalism as an economic system was challenged by Karl Marx. Liberalism as an ideology was challenged by Karl Marx because Karl Marx felt 
that under this system exploitation is taking place. The gap between the have and the have nots is increasing day by day and we should replace this system. Every ideology first of all it explains the nature of the society and after that why the society is like that and then the third one the way out. So, every ideology first of all it describes the society. Karl Marx described the society that in the society economic inequality is rampant. There is gap between the have and the have nots. Political power is in the hands of the economically dominant class. Political power is in the hands of the economically dominant class. The, cl the state is a class institution and the state is dominated by the economically well off class. That was the type of society that Karl Marx described. And Karl Marx further said that the capitalists, the liberals, they try to create a misconception in the minds of the common man that you all are equal because you have been given equal political rights. But in the absence of economic equality, political equality is useless. Here Karl Marx was right to large extent. When you go outside, you ask a rickshaw puller, you talk to a rickshaw puller or anyone, the vendor also who sells tea, you know, you are equivalent to Ambani. He will say, what? He will say, Are, I said that you are equivalent to Ambani. He said, are you preparing for civil services? He will say, yes, yes. Well, uh, you, have, you are coming from the class or from somewhere else? He said, no, no, I have just attended a class. Then you say, go read more. Unnecessarily, why are you wasting my time in useless things? Then you will again insist, no, no, you are equivalent to Ambani. Then he will get fed up and so that you yeah, get rid of him, just ask you hey, why. He will ask you hey, why. Then you will say, Ambani has got one vote, you have also have got one vote. You are politically equal, means you both are equal. You will say, you have read too much, I think so. <laughs> or you have gone mad. It means that the legacy of Karl Marx that econo political equality in the absence of economic equality is useless. That is what Karl Marx used to say. So, Karl Marx described the society like this. Then Karl Marx described that why the condition of the society is like this. And therein Karl Marx talked about this concept. And he termed this concept as surplus value. <coughs> that why there is gap between the have and the have nots? It is because of the surplus value. The workers are forced to work for more hours, but they are given lesser wages. That is why there is economic inequality in the society. Now, the way out. Karl Marx predicted that exploitation was at its peak during capitalism. And then he held that the workers will not tolerate such type of exploitation for long. Consciousness will come in the minds of the workers and then there will be a revolution, there will be a class struggle. And in the class struggle, the proletariats that is the industrial workers, they will overthrow the capitalists. Capitalism will be overthrown and there will be established socialism. 
that is how socialism came as per Karl Marx. There was exploitation under capitalism, the workers will not tolerate it for long, consciousness will come in the minds of the workers and then there will be revolution and the result of the revolution will be the overthrow of capitalism and then there will be established socialism. So, that is how socialism came. So, in the continuity you can write this ideology or liberalism was the dominant ideology during the industrial revolution, during the industrial revolution. Full stop. Under the influence of this ideology, under the influence of this ideology, the states did not enact, the states did not enact economic policies and labor legislations and labor legislations. Full stop. During this phase, during this phase, the exploitative nature, the exploitative nature of capitalism was visible, was visible. Full stop. The workers were forced, the workers were forced to work for more hours, to work for more hours, but were paid lesser wages, but were paid lesser wages. As a result of it, as a result of it, the gap between the have and the have nots, the gap between the have and the have nots started increasing in the society. started increasing in the society. And economic inequality and economic inequality became rampant, became rampant, R A M P A N T became rampant, full stop. In the next paragraph you can write, at this time, at sorry, during this phase, during this phase, comma, as a reaction to, as a reaction to the exploitation of the workers
comma Karl Marx Karl Marx K A R L Karl Marx challenge the ideology challenge the ideology of liberalism and held that and held that it was not freedom and held that it was not freedom but economic equality but economic equality that was the need of the hour that was the need of the hour underline economic equality so the basic difference between marxism and liberalism is that liberalism emphasizes on freedom of the individual whereas marxism emphasized on equality and that to economic equality so if someone will ask you a one liner that is one in one sentence you you differentiate so their freedom here economic equality was the need of the hour even for the marxist for the leftists they want a type of society where there is economic equality then in the next paragraph marx was of the view marx was of the view that exploitation that exploitation was at its peak was at its peak during capitalism during capitalism he predicted he predicted that the workers will not tolerate the workers will not tolerate such exploitation for long such exploitation for long and there will be class struggle and there will be class struggle that is revolution that is revolution full stop in the revolution in the revolution the workers will be victorious the workers will be victorious comma capitalism will come to an end and there will be established and there will be established socialism so from here we had started our discussion that in order to understand socialism we'll have to understand capitalism so first capitalism came there were some contradictions in capitalism and revolution took place and then came socialism now coming to socialism socialism is state ownership 
of the means of production and distribution the guiding principle of socialism from each according to his ability and to each according to his work this was missing in capitalism a worker used to work for more hours but he was paid lesser wages so the basic idea of socialism was that is if you work for 5 hours you will be getting wages for 5 hours if you work for 10 hours you will be getting wages for 10 hours no chances of exploitation but karl marx was the greatest humanist of his time the objective of karl marx was not to establish socialism karl marx wanted a society where there was economic equality that was his objective his objective was not socialism now karl marx held that economic equality cannot be achieved even under socialism it is not a guarantee why you see the principle here from each according to his ability and to each according to his work suppose if i work for 5 hours i will be getting wages for 5 hours if he works for 10 hours he will be getting wages for 10 hours if she works for 12 hours she will be getting wages for 12 hours gap will always be there the only thing is that exploitation part will be missing exploitation part will be missing so but the gap between the rich and the poor will be there i will be a poorer person because i work only for 5 hours he will be richer because he works for 10 hours she will be more rich why because she is working for 12 hours the gap will always be there in the society so karl marx was of the opinion that economic equality cannot be achieved even under socialism now the real philosopher in karl marx came till here he was practical also it is feasible also and socialism was in practice in the erstwhile ussr and not only this in china under mao it was practiced it was till 1971 it was complete state ownership of the means of production and distribution in china whatever used to happen inside china people did not know what was going on gradually they have turned uh, we can say we had they have started privatizing the things but it was in practice in some of the communist party ruled states but the question before marx was how to establish a society where there is economic equality now the real philosopher in karl marx he started thinking and he wrote that socialism was a transition period it was not my objective it is a transition period and in socialism it is complete philosophical in socialism what will happen gradually everyone will become worker everyone i will also become a worker 
he will also become a worker all of us will become worker all will start going to the factories all will start going to the factories all will work for a specific period of time say 4 hours 5 hours 6 hours 7 there will be uniformity and everyone will be getting the same wages everyone will be working for the same hours everyone will be getting the same wages and under these circumstances socialism will also come to an end and there will be established communism where everyone will be worker and in such a society there will be economic equality so you can write here marx was of the view that socialism was a transition period was a transition period where gradually where gradually everyone will become a worker full stop socialism will come to an end socialism will come to an end and there will be established communism there will be established communism because the students generally ask sir what is the difference between socialism and communism because a cover term is marxism but that is why i told you uh, that is we need to know some basic things also when you talk about communism communism is the classless stateless society <clears throat> it is community ownership of the means of production and distribution the guiding principle from each according to his ability and to each according to his needs nowhere in your prelim syllabus it is mentioned that the questions will be asked on marxism the questions will be asked on communism but we have observed that the questions are asked in the prelims examination to test your understanding of the things the first question from here a classless society according to karl marx meant the answer will be 
presence of only one class. Done? Classless society will not mean that there will be no classes. When we say classless society, presence of only one class, that is the workers class. Such type of understanding based questions will be there in the examination. Because what we had discussed that everyone will become a worker. So, there will be only one class that is all will be workers. So, classless society means presence of only one class then that is the workers class. Now, there is another term that we have used here stateless society that is withering away of the state, state will no longer be there. Then community ownership of the means of production and distribution. Now, if we talk about Karl Marx, if you challenge the Marxist, how many of you are uh, doing your graduation? How many of you are in your graduate? How, how many of you are doing your graduation? Okay. How many of you have completed your graduation? All of you except two or three. Okay. How many of you are doing your masters, MA, MSA, whatever it is? Now, how many of you have read from Delhi University? In our universities, we have some professors, some kya, many professors who are die hard Marxists. Uh, even if they think in that line, they speak in that line, I do not know whether they think in that line or not, but they speak in that line. You ask them, hey, what useless thing Karl Marx said? A classless society, a stateless society. It is an utopian idea. It is a romantic imagination. I still remember when I was doing my MA from Delhi University way back in 97-98. So, at that point of time, I had presented a paper as part of our MA work, the theory of state in Marxism. I still remember and after describing all the theories. I had concluded that the idea of a classless and a stateless society is an utopian idea and it is a romantic imagination. My professor, he was a die hard Marxist. Yes. So, he said, Komod, you should not have used such harsh words for Marx. And he gave me very less Marx also. Because I had criticized Marx, I had not criticized Marx, I had told you that he was the greatest humanist of his time. But I criticized this idea of classless and stateless society. But still today I also say that yes, it is a romantic imagination. What happens in a romance? We close our eyes and start thinking useless things. Yes, which, are, which may not be a reality also. What we do? We close our eyes and imagine, I am appearing in the prelims examination. I have encircled all the answers correctly. Then the result is out. Oh, my name is there. I have competed in the prelims examination. My friends are congratulating me. Then main, I am appearing in the main examination. I have done well. Result is there. Oh, I have gone through the main examination also. Then personality test, the women candidates will imagine that they are wearing sari, Indian dress and appearing in the interview. The boys will imagine that they are wearing tie, coat and in the interviews they have done good and then some of you will also imagine my rank is 1, 2, 3, I am giving press briefings, done. I am telling the students what is the strategy. And when you open your eyes, oh, I have not read anything today. 
romance you imagine so basically when we talk about a classless and stateless society it is imagination i said it was philosophical but when you challenge a marxist in jnu in du or in any university you know where that marxist will take you where marx had taken us because and you know where marx had taken us because every ideology it gives justification either in the name of god in the name of history or in the name of prudence that i am correct marx will take you to history and he will justify that whatever i have said is historically correct and marx takes us to the era of primitive communal society when man was a food gatherer and he was a hunter suppose we are living in that society we all are food gatherers and hunters and all of us who are capable who are healthy we will go out in the morning we will hunt or we will gather food and bring here suppose if i bring 100 oranges i will keep it here and if we need 10 oranges for the day i will take 10 oranges and the rest 90 oranges will belong to the community from each according to his ability and to each according to his needs community ownership of the means of production and distribution community ownership that is what karl marx used to say primitive communal society it was possible now what karl marx said karl marx had said that in the primitive communal society there were no classes everyone was equal everyone was a food gatherer or a hunter there were no classes classes came when some people acquired more and when some people acquired more they started imposing their views on others because some people wanted something more oh i have got this you want yes i want more you work for me he said society transformed itself from the primitive communal society to the slave owning society because some people acquired more that is what karl marx had said there is no historical justification for it it is completely just we can say interpretation by karl marx that society moved from primitive communal so stage to slave owning society and in the slave owning society for the first time there were two classes those who had got surplus they became the masters and those who had got less they became the slaves society was divided into two classes master and the slave whatever the master used to say was the law because he had economic power in his hand then society moved further some people acquired land and the society transformed itself into the feudal society those who had the control over land the feudal lords whatever they used to say was the law the society here was divided into two groups one the feudal lords and the serfs and then came capitalism capitalism the capitalist and the industrial workers bourgeois and the proletariat the capitalist had got economic power in their hands so whatever the capitalist used to say was the law and when so the concept of political authority the concept of state came according to karl marx because of the coming of the classes when there were no classes there was no political authority and when there will be no classes then there will be no state also stateless society that was the justification by karl marx that the concept of political authority the concept of state came with the coming of the classes and when the classes will no longer be there the state will also no longer be there 
there will be community ownership of the means of production and distribution. That was his idea. And here you can write as note, N-O-T-E. <coughs> Mahatma Gandhi also favored the idea, also favored the idea of a stateless society, a stateless society. If someone will ask you that what was the ideology of Gandhi? Gandhi was an anarchist. Gandhi was an anarchist and Gandhi was not in favor of any state. Why? Because Gandhi ji was of the view the state tries to curb one violence with the help of another violence. State is an organized violence. So, if someone commits a violent activity, the state tries to curb it with another violence. That is why the state should not be there. So, if someone will ask you what was the ideology of Gandhi, you should say that Gandhi was an anarchist. Not only this, Gandhi gave the concept of Swaraj and he was of the opinion that if everyone will imbibe the idea of truth and non-violence in himself or herself, then there will be no need of any authority. He, and he termed it as enlightened anarchism. Everyone will be enlightened. There will be no need of any authority. Suppose if I will not think bad of you, you will not think bad of others then there will be no need of any authority. That is what Gandhi used to say. Another question from the prelims point of view. Which of the following statement is correct? Both Gandhi and Marx stood for a stateless society. Such type of understanding based questions are being asked in the prelims examination nowadays. In your syllabus, communism is not there in the prelims syllabus. But yes, when you read the preamble, the word socialist is there. So, you must be aware about the nitty gritties of it also. So, two questions I told you. I, and Vesavi, it is a utopian idea in practical also. Because none of the countries in the world can claim to be communist countries. Their communist party ruled states. Their communist party ruled states. The state is also always there. You see China and not only this, the communist party ruled states are becoming more and more powerful also and they control every aspect of human life. Even there is no freedom of press in China. In India, people say that we are not free, we are not free, it is an emergency like situation. Go to China and you will find that is what is democracy. Then the Indian leftists will come to know that how far democracy is successful in India. Even freedom of press is not there. Here anyone can move with a camera or mobile phone, oh poor Indians and click photographs. Done. You can, the, even the foreigners take part in the protest against the state. Go to China and do it. There was a man who was protesting. Yes? Yes? 10,000 students were protesting in Tiananmen Square and the tanks crushed them in China. Just Google Tiananmen Square and you will come to know about what had happened there. So, basically the state is becoming more and more powerful. So, Marx here has been proved wrong when he talked about a stateless society. The state is still there. And it is becoming more and more powerful in the communist party ruled states. Even during the erstwhile USSR, anyone who used to speak against Stalin, there was a man who had spoken against Stalin the day before. That was, yes. So, and then the concept of a classless society is also not feasible. It is also not feasible. 
The only thing is that the Marxian legacy is alive because the exploitation of the workers is taking place. The basis of the Marxian theory that is the exploitation of the workers is still relevant in the contemporary times because exploitation of the workers is still taking place in the society. The gap is there between the have and the have nots. And in the era of liberalization, the chances of exploitation is still there and, it's, and the exploitation is going on. There the Marxian legacy is there. But the methodology of Karl Marx, the end of Karl Marx may not be practical may not be practical because there are many loopholes in Marxism. You're, if you have got political science as an optional paper, your teacher will discuss these things with you. I just wanted to give you basic ideas so that in the prelims examination, the questions will not be blank. That is the advantage with the political science students because in the Indian polity, teachers do not discuss these things and such advantages are there with the students who read PSIR as an optional paper because they read such things in detail also. But two questions I told you, you will be now able to answer the questions which can be asked from Marxism, Communism in the prelims examination. 